Okay. You... Yeah. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. And your spirit, you started to engage your spirit, man, right there at that point. Yes. That is great. It's, it's really important that we mark progress in our life. If we don't, that's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Okay. But you can, I, I know where they can fix those these days. <laughs> Get that thing back online. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. So we mark progress, don't we? Do you ever feel stagnant in, 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 your, in our walk sometimes? Well, I want to encourage you that you may feel stagnant, but you're moving forward. Because when we sometimes feel stagnant, that's because we want more. That's a good thing. We desire more. But I don't, I don't want to stay in this place. Well, that's the blessing of being hungry and thirsting for something else, right? So don't be hard on yourself that way in Jesus' name. That is some great examples. Would everybody like to experience that this week? Okay, let's pray that. God, I want to experience moving forward in you. I want to experience moments, Nadine, where I catch myself living in the flesh and I say, no, I'm not the flesh person anymore. And the spirit comes in Jesus name. I want to catch myself gossiping or starting to judge somebody and say, oh no, you're never going to get me that way in Jesus name. We want to catch ourselves going the extra mile when we really don't have time to do it. And we, but we do it in great love. And then we don't tell nobody that we did it. Hallelujah. But you got to tell me because I want to hear testimonies in Jesus name. We, we can experience this life. It's a life to live, not to just talk about the kingdom of God is about power, not just a bunch of talk, okay, in Jesus' name. So would you like to engage it? It happens when that, those pages become our lifestyle. And that's why I've come. That's why when God said, I want you to come talk to everybody for a month or so, it's because of the transformation. This is what God has just planted in me so deeply. I love to see people change. I love to see them transformed and get ignited in Christ Jesus. And that's what I live to see you change. I live to see your heart explode and you and us, us to start living an abundant life. Not a religious cocoon, but the, the moth is becoming the butterfly with very cool hair. Come on. All of us are becoming the butterflies in Jesus' name. We're busting out of that with very cool hair. That's right. I want us to pay attention. Next week, nobody's got anything to write with, except for Patrick. Patrick is definitely teacher's pet right here. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I, wanted, I want you to try and I'm going to ask this question again. I'm going to ask this question next week. Where, when, are, when have you lived in the spirit and lived the blessing in Jesus' name? Okay, as we talk about Matthew 5, 6, and 7, this is a Sermon on the Mount. And I'm going to also flip into Luke a little bit. But these things are called the Beatitudes. It's a special word that was made up just to talk about these, the first part of Matthew chapter 5. It's created for that. And I, I, I want you to know something about these things that we're going to talk about. They're called be attitudes, not do attitudes. And the reason for that is religion tells us to do things, to perform but relationship tells us and shows us how to be instead of doing. That's the outside of the cup. We first are being. I'm being transformed. My identity is completely immersed in Christ. Our minds are changing to have the mind of Christ. When we have the mind of Christ, it's as if, it's as if Christ is doing the thinking for us. What would Christ do in this situation? If he was going down this aisle today and he was looking at person to person and he was asking, what's going on in those person's spirit? Who needs me to smile today at them or, or stop and have a moment with them or just to pray for them? And we begin to take on the very character of Christ and have the mind of Christ. And then that becomes our identity it's not just something we do, but it's who we are. The be attitudes, not the do attitudes. And when we read these things, all of these things comes down to what's motivating us. What is driving us? What is our intention? And are we being intentional about letting our identity change? So you could just write the word, is my identity changing? 
that make that sense. Is my identity changing? Or am I just doing things? And if we go a little bit farther than this, we'll understand that as our identity changes, that will motivate all the things that we actually do. But it begins with our being. Remember last week I told you about Watchman Nee and I said that he said that no person can consistently act in a manner inconsistent with what they believe about themselves. If we believe, and I'm talking about in our spirit, I'm not talking about in our head. Belief in our head will come and go. But as we connect with our spirit and discern our own spirit man, while we're watching the MP3 player or the Zoom player or the Motley crew, whatever it was John was hooked up with, boom, there's my spirit man in Jesus' name. Why would I ever leave that guy? You see, as we narrow this down and get deeper into this thing, I'm praying by the last week or two that, I've, that I'm here that we really are finding our spirit. And we begin to understand that the Holy Spirit wants it to completely consume our spirit and we can operate from that place in Jesus' name. What would be the door to transformation? If I ask you, what is the door to transformation? Okay, he, he's, the, he's the door. Okay, okay, he's, he's the one that's going to do it. On our side of the door, what would bring us to that place where he would open that door? That's right. That's exactly right. It's, it's the vulnerability, the, hum, the humility. I would think that sometimes we can be humble but not vulnerable. Because, see, the vulnerability says, I'll let you change me. I'll let you put my hands on you. The hum, hum, humble thing just might just say, well, I'm not worthy or, or things like that. But the vulnerability, you know, we talk about the clay. That's when you let him well, get on the table, man. We ain't going nowhere. And let him put his hands on us, and we become vulnerable that way in Jesus' name. Now, I'm talking to people that are the most beautiful salt of the earth right here in Jesus' name. But the intimacy with our Father in heaven can always be, in, it's been my experience, can always want to hear him more and to understand the, the, the closeness of him more and more in Jesus' name. So I'm just, we're just praying through that together in Jesus' name. And I can tell now, when I begin to get in my flesh, when my heart is d deceitful and taking me on a wild roller coaster ride, when I'm hanging on to something that I shouldn't have hanging on to, when I justify things in my head, even for just a little while. And, and you know what? I've got to repent of even holding that in my head for even a little while. When I'm disappointed, and then I go, God, you saw what I did. Why, why did you let this happen like this? That don't get out of my head or even out into my lips very much anymore. Praise God, but it could definitely get that way. So all of these things are reminders of come back to the Spirit and come back in the Spirit in Jesus' name and be able to live, us, live in that way. That's great. You're exactly right. Humility, vulnerability, those are some things that, that, I, that I wrote down. I, I pray that we're experiencing. This book, this beautiful, holy love story is a book of experiences. But it's not just their experiences. It's our experiences together that we can couple together to live in the same spirit that wrote this, that identified it in Jesus' name. And that's my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Okay, let's look at Matthew chapter 7, the last two verses. We're going to go back and do the chapter. But as I was praying this through, God said, I want you to start at the end and just talk to everybody about what this looks like. So everyone, let's start back in a, let's start back in 24. So everyone who hears these words of mine, Matthew chapter 7, 24. Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them. Okay, a lot of people hear the words, right? How about that second part, act on them? We put them into action. We put them into activation. Sunday, this last Sunday, I talked about repenting from dead works, and we did part of the spiritual exercise of repentance on Sunday. I pray that we're continuing that through the week, seeing the things that I need to repent of that are dead in my life, taking an inventory of that. But this week, we're going to literally replace those dead works with action. 
the place, the, the time slots in our life, the mind slots in our life, the mental exercises that we've been involved in. We're repenting of that, turning away from it, and then we're going to have a series of opportunities for replacement. I'm going to take you through some very practical steps to do in your heart, in your home, in your life, on your job, in all of those kind of things. Is that okay? Well, this is what it's talking about. It's not just hearing the word, it's acting on them. We'll have a choice to make. We've got a choice to make right now. The one that acts on them will be like a wise man, farsighted. I love the way the Amplified says that. Farsighted, practical, sensible man who built this house on a rock. The rain fell and the floods and the torrents came and the winds blew and slammed against the house, yet it did not fall because it had been founded on a rock. How many of you would know that you would say, I have built my house upon Jesus? Okay, but then still... Let's go a little farther. The winds came. They slammed against you. Torment came. And you started understanding that maybe I'm really not built on the rock. I said I was built on the rock. I wanted to be built on the rock. But when it, when it really came down to it, I had trouble staying on the rock. What things would, would happen in our life, the circumstances of life that are going to happen would make us abandon the rock or slip off of the rock. The circumstances of life would happen, but then we would have to make kind of a, we'd have to go through this process of saying, do I trust God like I said I trust God way beyond Sunday morning when the, when the flood came, or is this who I am? Is this my identity? It's just something that I do in religious practice because it's comfortable for me or I find social value in community. Believe me, a lot of people going to church because they got friends. Not you guys here. Y'all got no friends. I don't know what y'all talk about. <laughs> I think y'all are on the rock. I think y'all are on the rock in Jesus' name. Pot, yes. Okay. Amen. Yes. Yes. Have you done that? Have you found yourself off the rock? Okay. 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 <laughs> a righteous man. <laughs> Might have heard a little bit. A righteous man falls a bunch of times, but he keeps on getting up. Amen. Well, let's, let's let today be an opportunity for us to say, you know what? I don't care what the old, come on, Connie. Owned it. That's real. That's some maturity right there. That's some maturity, Ray, to say that. You know, the first part of this thing about the guy that he talks about, it says it's farsighted. Be like a wise man, farsighted. I've been very short-sighted before. But I think that all of us are maturing quite a bit here to be able to step back and say, mm-mm not getting off the rock. I see that this is a trap of the devil. I see that the devil's trying to draw me into my soul life and live in offense or live in hurt or I don't understand what God's doing, but I don't need to understand what God's doing because I trust God because I can look a little bit in my past and say, he never failed me. I'm not leaving the rock, okay? See, the more far farsighted we get, the more stable we're going to be on that rock right there in Jesus' name. And I... I pronounce a stability, a far-sighted stability, that we are planted on the rock. We're, we're planted by the river of water. We're not tumbleweeds. And I've, I just see y'all just doing so wonderful, not being tossed to and fro. And everyone who hears these words of mine in verse 26 and does not do them will be like the foolish or stupid man in this version who built this house on the sand. And I'm going to ask you a question about the sand in just a second. The rain fell and the floods and torrents came 
and the winds blew and slammed against the house, and it fell. And great and complete was its fall. Whew. Serious business. When has sand got into your world? When have you been tempted to straddle between the, the rock and the sand? When have, you, when have you thought you could split that difference over there? When has, have we, have we been short-sighted and thought that we could just live in two worlds and became double-minded somehow or the other? I think there's enough wisdom in this room that we would not just jump all the way into the sand, but the devil will say, hey, put one foot over here, boy. Come on over here. And he will try and connive you into some little form of compromise. Dave, talk to me. Okay, okay. <laughs> Amen. He's always there. Got his hand there. All got yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That helps a lot, doesn't it, Dave? Yes. Would you pray that prayer that we would not take our eyes off of, off of the risen Savior? I love that, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. As we get into the scripture, I'm, I'm, I'm not so concerned with trying to explain every little nuance of the concept that Jesus is talking about. But what, I, what I'm asking the God to do is to plant something in our spirit, to plant a motivation to live a life blessed, not a life of religion, not a life of apathy, not a life of success, but a life of blessing, Jesus' name. And if we, can pl if we can let the Lord plant this d down deep inside of us, why would we want to live a life of what's the opposite of blessing? Cursed. Cursed. Okay? You see, these, 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 these beatitudes right here are conditional. Here's how we live in order to receive the blessing. Now, if we don't receive the blessing, could we just stay in the middle and not really have nothing happen to us? No. 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 We live under the curse, right? And, and, and how can we do all of these things? Well, we can't do them all unless we become them. Then we're going to believe that that's who we are, and we will naturally, the action will naturally follow. That means that we have discerned our spirit, and we believe that our identity is changing, that it's changed. Then I'll be able to naturally operate how God told us to do it in Jesus' name. So let's look at these things. Jesus saw the crowds and he went up on the mountain and he was seated. And his disciples came to him and he began to teach them. So he saw the crowds coming. Thousands were coming. They've heard about the miracles. Now right here in this part of Matthew, Matthew chapter 1 and also Luke chapter 4, we read that last week. That's when Jesus starts casting out the demons and people get healed. And the whole world is set on fire. The neighbor tells the neighbor. And the next thing you know, there are thousands of people throgging. Where is he? Where is he figuring out? And so I can just kind of see. Here's the disciples, and here's Jesus. They're kind of easing up the mountain. And, and, and Andrew goes, hey, Jesus, look. And they all look. There's thousands of people coming. And so Jesus just goes down. His intention, I think, was to just to teach the disciples. Maybe they got the best seats close to him. When he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and he sat down. And his disciples came to him and he began to teach them. Now let's, let's be the disciples. Let's don't just be the crowds that can take it or leave it, that are just there for the miracle or some healing or something that they saw that is sensational, but are there like the disciples having their identity changed. Okay, here we go. He began to teach them saying, blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy, and to be admired are the poor in spirit. Those devoid of spiritual arrogance, 
those who regard themselves as insignificant, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. I love the way that the Amplified spells this out. So the kingdom of heaven, people might think, Pat, well, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to get through the pearly gates. Do you think that's all there is to heaven? What about, what about now? Is that a new way of you looking at things? And knowing that we all are one family. Yes. And we need, we can't be arguing. Oh, cool. We need to get along and love each other just like we were brothers and sisters. Just like they're doing it in heaven? Yes. You think they're doing it that way in heaven? So we can experience the kingdom of heaven right here? Strong right there. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Do you ever catch yourself not doing it that way? There's some times that I always feel that somebody is not loving me. Some people don't like me. And that's the way no way. Love. We love you. Look at those earrings. They say kiss me. Oh. They're out in the world. That's right. Yeah, that's a... Uh, they don't know what they're missing, Miss Pat. That's right. I like it. Okay. But but you don't have they don't have power over you. You love them anyway in Jesus' name. Okay. So the that's that's beautiful. I love everybody. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Thank you, Miss Pat. I don't I don't want to argue with anybody, and if somebody starts to argue with me, I walk away. Yes, you do. You beat a hot path the other direction. That's, that's, and do you pray for them a little bit? I bet you can pray for them just a little bit. Yep. You can love them in Jesus' name and see if God doesn't change them. Yep. Some friends around you have started to change, haven't they, by seeing the way that you've changed. Yep. I know that's true. That's awesome. That's beautiful. And I know everybody in this room right now loves me. They sure do. We sure do. And we're all one big thing. That's right. This is experiencing a little taste of what the kingdom of heaven is like, right? Is that Okay. Here's what got us in that door. It was humility. Blessed are the poor in spirit that got in here. Has God changed you over the course of years to be uh, more humble? Somebody give me a testimony about your, 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 your humility journey, your journey into humility and your journey into, into wanting to be a peaceful person. Would anybody share a testimony about that? I used to be this way. This used to be my attitude. But now this is how God is changing me into this place. We don't realize the miracles that we are around all the time. Amen. Not only would she pull it, she could throw it. <laughs> Danny, were you going to say something? Thank you, Donna. Swordmaster. Okay. Wow. Amen. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Wow. Did love help change you? Come on. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. That's right, buddy. <laughs> That's right. See, God's got timing of things. And if we read the Bible, which we are doing, we see that 
Many times God is preparing the people for what they got coming next. And there's nothing but time that can do that. Intimacy with God, depending upon God, and not having an answer right now. That keeps our faith coming deeper and deeper on a deeper level. And we're, we're in the middle of that. Does everybody understand that? Okay. But then we look around a little bit and look how far God's taken us in Jesus' name. Yes. No, you're doing, you are obeying. Will of your father. There, now, see, you got in scripture in you. That's what I'm talking about. Way to go, Danny, baby. Hello, why? <laughs> wow. Yes, amen. Way to be an example. I'm so proud of you guys. So we, we understand that the blessing comes from us having a becoming poor in spirit, okay? Now, th if this is, can this be our identity? Because we don't want the curse and be the haughty person anymore, right? Can we pray this prayer together? Let's do it like this. We're going to repent of the dead works of being haughty and being proud, being judgmental, being arrogant on any of those levels, okay? And if we've got bitterness or unforgiveness in us, we got to start with that. So let's pray together. Dear Lord God, please, please forgive me of thinking too much of myself, of holding grudges against people, being judgmental. I recognize that I wasn't poor in spirit. Today, Lord, I confirm my identity as a poor in spirit person. I ask you to remove the curses of pride from me in Jesus' name. May I be like Zacchaeus and love the people I stole from and give to people I don't even know because the last shall be first and the first shall be last. I take my position as low and humble in spirit. In Jesus' name. Lord God, we're moving on to read some more of the scripture, but we're never going to leave this. There's a reason that this is the first one that he said. Because when we are this way, we become vulnerable when we're poor in spirit. If we've got it figured out, we, we won't be that way. Lord God, forgive me anytime I'm not poor in spirit. Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are those who mourn, mourn over their sins, mourn for things that they can't control, of decisions that God has made, of things that they don't have. What all do we need to mourn for? We need to mourn when somebody dies, right? Sometimes we stop mourning because we want to change the circumstance and bring them back, right? But then we'll never advance. We will be stuck in that place. How many of you have gotten stuck before because you failed to mourn? You fail to embrace the morning. Okay. Did we learn from that? Did we kind of get on the sand instead of the rock because we walked away from what God would say right here in Jesus' name? Now, mourning can take a long time, especially in a death situation or in a hurtful situation or some sickness that we don't understand. But until we embrace the morning, we will never get the blessing. We'll sit there in a stagnant place. Now, don't fake it. Don't just say, I'm going to start mourning. Just 
let God bring you into that place because I, you want to be in the blessed place and not in the, in the cursed place or in the stagnant place, right? Because that, these are things that separate us from God. How many of you are experiencing a closer and closer intimacy with God the Father in Jesus' name? Isn't that what we want? Isn't that the most beautiful thing? That's been my goal since we, since we started on Sunday and then now we're working on here is to just completely close the gap between us and our daddy in heaven in Jesus' name. And this is the huge doorway. And then the mourning thing, do you ever have to mourn over making a mistake? I can't, Tyler, I cannot believe you didn't say that. I have to mourn over taking those mistakes all the time. Because <laughs> you've seen me mourn over making mistakes. We have to mourn over make mistakes. Lord, I grieved you. I broke your heart. I wasn't compassionate towards somebody that I should have been. And I'm, I'm going to repent over that, and I'm going to mourn over this thing. I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm going, to, I'm going to acknowledge it, just like Connie was saying. And then I'm going to release this thing, too. Because mourning is saying, when we mourn over somebody, let's say somebody dies and we thought it was before they should have, and then we, we have trouble mourning or starting mourning because we're questioning God and we're really not trusting God. Well, we're definitely going to be stuck in that place, right? Okay. But then when we begin the mourning things, we say, I do trust you, God. You know better than I do. And that first scripture that said, the wise man that has great foresight, our foresight is understanding God knows way better than I do. And so I'm going to trust you in Jesus' name. And I don't have to understand. As a matter of fact, that will increase our faith. Many times I find that the intellect is what holds us back from intimacy, that us trying to figure out or decipher all of God's ways will stop us from just trusting him. Uh, you know, we've, we've, done, we've done a trust falls where we just fall back in his arms and, and hopefully somebody's going to catch me in Jesus' name, right? It's that place of of vulnerability that I, I, God loves that, us being that vulnerable. When Abraham had all of his 70 people with him and he had uh, cattle and all, all of his descendants and God said, okay, I want you to take off. Now I'm not even going to tell you where you're going to go. See, we've heard that story so many times that we don't put ourselves in that place, do we? Well, I don't make a lick of sense. I got a house here. I've been working on it for a long time. Well, I'm a logical man. God gave me a brain. How many of you heard that? Okay. Well, which do you want? Do you want faith or you want to rely on your brain? Sometimes it can be both, believe me. Most of the time it is both in Jesus' name. But sometimes God will say, you're not going to see what on the other side of this mountain, but I'm going to ask you to start climbing. See what God will do in Jesus' name. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those disciples that had that kind of faith. I'm going to walk away from the fishing. I'm going to walk away from everything I've done, and this is what I'm going to do. That's some fired up faith, isn't it? That's where revival starts happening, when those kind of things happen in Jesus' name. Okay, let's keep on trucking. Blessed, forgiven, and refreshed are those who mourn over their sins and repent, for they will be comforted. We want to be comforted, don't we? But we end up wrestling a lot. Let's pray through this right here. Dear God, some of us have had trouble starting the mourning process over different things in our life. Or really acknowledging that we need to repent. And so therefore, we don't have any comfort. We live in rest, restlessness. And God's showing me something right now. Some of you have not cut yourself any slack. And, and that you're blaming yourself for how your life is going. God's just showing me that real clear. And he wants you to mourn that and release that because we have to accept the reality of where we are right now. And the things that we may not have in life that we think we should have, we need to mourn that right now in Jesus' name. Mourn is to release it, to accept our part of it, but understand that Rain falls on the good and the evil, and the sun shines on the righteous and the unrighteous, which means there's no blame to be assigned. The devil is the accuser of the brethren and the sisterhood. That comes from him, and he's trying to stop us from mourning and being comforted. Some of us didn't experience an awesome 
dad that was able to just comfort us. And that comfort comes with great security. In other words, son, I got your back. Daughter, I got your back. No matter what happens, I got you. What security comes from that? What comfort comes from that? That's the intimacy. We're getting toward where we can see where the payoff is in this thing. You've already told me you're getting closer to daddy, closer to Abba like that. That's because the vulnerable thing is the little spirit in you. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. That's the blessed are the ones that live by the spirit and are engaged in their own spirit. Are you tracking with me, anybody? In Jesus' name. So we declare the blessing of mourning today in Jesus' name. Did anybody have a question about what I just said, what we just prayed, what we just invoked? Any questions? Somebody stand up and sum it up for me then. Kimberly, sum it up. What do we get when we mourn? What's the payoff? Yes, yes, versus what? Discomfort, insecurity, wobbly legs. Did you hear what she said? How many of you have had like a, a, a constant beating yourself up, regret, going around and around and around, trying to fix the situation, trying to adjust it. She said it way better than I said it right there. That's it. Got this mo movie replaying in your head all the time because you haven't mourned it. Mourn that situation, receive the comfort, and see what God's got next in Jesus' name. Awesome. Way to work, Team Jesus. Thank you, Kimberly. Okay. So now we've gotten the blessing of being poor in spirit. We've got the blessing of being able to mourn. Let's see what's next. Blessed, inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure, worthy of respect are the gentle, the kind-hearted, the sweet-spirited, the self-controlled, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the gentle. The old King James says the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Wow. Let me, let me, let me say, say that one more time. Inwardly peaceful. Lord God, we receive the blessing of being inwardly peaceful. We are going to. We don't say, I want to live in peace. We say, I'm going to live at peace. We're going to be spiritually secure with Abba in Jesus' name. We're going to be worthy of respect. Let me tell you about that, what that means. That means respect in ourself instead of beating ourselves up. It doesn't mean like beating our chest like we're prideful again. It just means, hey, you're worthy. How many of you have struggled with unworthiness, right? Well, we're worthy of that respect. That's where the blessing comes from. And that, the, 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 the beautiful fruit of this thing is when we become people that have gentle spirits. I, I, I was definitely not this person before. I was definitely not a gentle person, just a bully running over people. I don't see a, I don't see a person in here that's not gentle in spirit. I'm so proud of y'all, and I love you, and I just thank you for sowing that into me in Jesus' name. Here's the payoff for being gentle. Inheriting the earth. Inheriting the earth. What's that mean, inheriting the earth? We know we're going to live in glory. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Inheriting the earth. Anybody got an idea, a concept? I'm not telling you that I know exactly what that means either. Come on. Yes. Yes. So we, we win, right? We're still living on earth, but we win. We win because we're gentle. And, and the Bible says in other places, and I can't pull them up right now, it says when you're right, when we're right, we don't need to defend ourselves because God will defend us. And so we just step back. How many of you have, have had a situation where you wanted to rush in and try and solve the thing, but then God gave you some wisdom and you just waited a few days or a week or so, and it all worked itself out, huh? That's been your life, huh? 
just back off and it happens. Okay. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for that gentle spirit. Con Con? Okay. <laughs> Amen. it from there so do you, would you say that now you are gentle in spirit would your friend say that this is the new Camp Connie gentle in spirit that's your identity I would too that's it huge growth in, in this place sure the second we get offended we've gotten our flesh involved right and so if we're going to live in the spirit, we become, we work toward becoming unoffendable, right? Okay, so can gentleness, we talked about two things, the poor in spirit, we talked about mourning. Can gentleness become part of our identity too? Wouldn't that be cool? Come on. Exactly. Prune a little bit. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> of course. Of course. We have to have it. Yes. Yes. When we, when we begin to talk about the fruit of the Spirit, all of these things... When we live the opposite of them, then we're living in the flesh. So the key to all of these things, we will automatically produce all of these things if we're living in the Spirit. If our roots are immovable and in the Spirit, we won't have to work toward just doing these things because we will naturally be these things in Jesus' name. So the gateway, the big floodgate, is to just stay in the Spirit. But we, when we talk about it and break it down, I think this is why Jesus broke it down like this, because he wants us to be aware of the fruit that we're getting, because this is the blessing we're getting, to stay in the Spirit, to remain in the Spirit in Jesus' name, to be connected with our own Spirit through all of it. Let's do one more for the night, if that's okay with you. But let's pray gentleness into us. Who would like to pray that our identity would be that of gentleness? Would somebody pop up and pray that for us? Lord God, we identify as gentle people in Jesus' name, living from the Spirit and producing gentleness, mourning, uh, mourning things and having a repentant heart all the time and living as a poor in spirit person in Jesus' name. See, when he starts talking about poor in spirit, he's identifying, identifying our very spirits right off the bat. He wants us to connect with our own spirits. Let's go to verse 6. Blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who actively seek right standing with God. See, a lot of people think righteousness is piousness or, or piety or perfection or, 
you know, they look at people that are trying to be all that, you know. But it's really what it says in parentheses here, actively seeking to be in right standing with God. In order to be, I, for me, in order to be right standing with God, I've got to constantly have a repentant heart. I've got to be looking at my heart, my passion center, you know, to be in right standing with God. Is my heart honoring you right now? Even though my body may not be sinning, but is my heart so entrenched with you, so captured by you, that I'm in right standing with you, that we have an ongoing love relationship beyond whatever is going on in the flesh? This is when you really know we're being immersed in the Spirit in this way. And I want to tell you a great payoff here, Ray, for this part. When we're hungering and thirsting for righteousness, that's where the anointing comes from. I see that the anointing comes from people that are in love with God and are going after him, that are hungering and thirsting for right relationship with him, not to be religious or to be uh, in any way uh, just seeking to be gifted or anything like that, but just seeking the presence of God. And then when you're around people that are just so wanting to be with God and, and loving the Lord and connected with him, that's anointed, isn't it? We would say that person is anointed because they want to be with God so much, so they're bringing the intimacy, the connection with God into every place that they go, all those intimate places in Jesus' name. Do y'all know that we can get to that special place too? That anointing doesn't have to be for the preacher man, okay? A lot of y'all can be a lot more anointed than I can be, and I want to be closer to y'all as we're anointed together and walking in God's anointing together in Jesus' name. And so as I see you uh, just seeking the Lord and wanting to be with the Lord and, and seeking, knowing the goodness of God and just giving him glory, not just verbally, but letting him fully into our heart. And the little boy inside of us is rescued more and more by, by Abba in Jesus' name. Then we are just hungering and thirsting more and more for that relationship. And that old, that old song that says, the, the things of earth grow strangely dim. Wouldn't that be cool if this earth just kind of looked strange to us because we really are aliens to this earth and this isn't where we live. This is just where we're showing up for a little while because we're already living from heaven to earth. We're already living as citizens of heaven in Jesus' name and this world doesn't have power over me. The people don't have power over me because everything in me is seeking right relationship with the Lord. God's telling me something now in the spirit. He's telling, telling me, some of us, the reason that we aren't drawing, uh, being that connected is because we're still beating ourselves up over something because we haven't started to mourn. So somebody in here hadn't started to mourn yet. I, I know it. So Lord God, whoever that is, they're beating themselves up. They're holding ought against themselves, beating ourselves up. We're keeping ourselves trapped. No. The mourning spirit is here. The anointing and the blessing of mourning is upon us right now in Jesus' name. We're mourning and releasing right now to the glory of God in Jesus' name. And now we're hungering and thirsting to be right with you, Lord God. To be, if, if, if God lives in us, we must be pretty cool. Because God's in us, right? So, so we, I can't, I'm not going to beat God up, right? I'm going to mourn it and release it. And be in right standing with him, no matter where I'm at in Jesus' name. So, Lord God, we pray for the, the anointing of the hungering and the thirsting right now to your glory in Jesus' name. And it'll come whenever we decide to do it. And y'all are doing it already in Jesus' name. What do you do when you go to sleep? What do you go when you, when you go to bed and you lay your bed, you lay, your, lay you down and you close your eyes? What do you think about? You pray? You pray. I pray bear gets saved. <laughs> oh. What do you pray? Okay. Yes, yes. Do you clean your temple? Clean your temple? Clean your temple. Lord God, if I've offended you in any way, 
If I've had a single thought that wasn't holy, I repent of it right now. I hunger and thirst for you. I invite you to talk to me all night in Jesus' name. I give you glory. Hi. Yes, ma'am. This is Miss Betty. She's my friend. Yes. And so, because if not, then things that came in my mind that would be there. And so, I just, just sort of. Yes, Lord. Really sort of Amen. Yes. Can you do it? You can go to sleep listening to the scripture. Yeah. That is beautiful. We thank you for the comfort yeah. that God gives you through his word in Jesus' name. And the peace of God that's beyond anything we can understand is guarding your heart and mind in your sleep. In Christ Jesus. I love that. There's going to be some more practical things that I talk about on Sunday that will help us stay in the spirit like that in Jesus' name. And believe me, this has been my experience. The, 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 the hurt that you lived in for so long, those demons were just caked in there for so long, okay? And you're going to, they're going to get more and more distant. The more you just fall in love with Jesus just like you are, they're going to give up, okay? They're not on the inside. They're just trying to jack with you on the outside. They're going to give up in Jesus' name. And I'm going to teach you Sunday how to speak in a powerful and new way in your home in Jesus' name to win this battle. And the most important thing you're doing, falling in love with Jesus. That's the most important thing. Nothing, <laughs> nothing will supplant the desire that we have in our heart to just fall in love with Jesus. Yes. When I was younger, and I was some of you older ones that are my age can relate to this. When I was young, I cared about, oh, I got to have this big house. I got to have this certain thing. Yes. I got to do this certain thing. But as I've gotten older and closer to the Lord, those things mean nothing to me. Yes. Where did those desires come from? What part of your being? Oh, my soul. That's right. They came from your soul. You are, con you are crushing your soul. You're saying my soul doesn't have power over me. Yes. You don't have to go through that. That's right. That's right. That is great. I received that. We received that together. In Jesus' name. I want you to read Luke chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. Um, if, you're, if you're taking notes, I want you to read that uh, before we come together next week. 24 through 26. So at the same time that Jesus had preached about the blessings, uh, there was another sermon. It was, could have been at the same time. And Matthew just wrote about the blessings, and Luke wrote about the woes, or it could have been a completely different time. But I'm going to talk about the woes. That means woe unto you for this. In other words, here come the curses. We're not going to spend too much time on that because you guys are on the right path for sure. So there's the four things that we receive today. We receive the blessing of the poor in spirit. You might want to just emphasize these in your notes. I receive the blessing of being poor in spirit. I receive the blessing of mourning, and they will be comforted. I receive the blessing of gentleness or meekness, for I will inherit the earth. Kimberly said it great. In other words, God's going to take care of all of our problems. <laughs> Very cool. And uh, I receive the blessing of hungering and thirsting. There's where the anointing comes from. And we will be satisfied. That means peaceful. Is that cool? That's what I'm talking about. You see, when we're so connected to our dad in heaven, we're going to have peace because he's got us. And it's not complicated. And we come into that with our identity, knowing that we're beloved sons and beautiful daughters of the Lord Jesus.
Let's touch somebody. Just kind of stretch your hand out to somebody right now. I'm going to take us through a little bit of a progression in the spirit. Lord God, uh, these last two Wednesdays have been real special to me. I've been thinking about this for about a month, coming and getting a chance to just talk and visit with our friends, with our family. And, and I just you just put it on my heart as, as your spirits are going to rise, y'all. The spirit that, that, that you have is starting to rise in Jesus' name. When John recognized that he was changing and he didn't like Motley Crue anymore, it was his spirit that caught that and said, man, that's my spirit changing. That's not his flesh. That's not his soul. And that's where we're, we're at in Jesus' name. So we're peeling back every, all the curses of before of being prideful. We peel it back. It comes off. And our spirit comes a little higher. And then we're peeling back the curse of not mourning and not repenting and not releasing. And then the spirit comes up a little bit higher. And we're peeling back the, the part of us that we used to not be gentle and we used to be hard. And a gentle answer turns away wrath, but we lived in wrath. So we peel that back and our spirit rises a little bit more in Jesus' name. And now we're hungering and thirsting to be right with you. Not right with the world, like Cheryl said, keeping up with the Joneses. Or right with my own ego. Or having to defend myself. But right with you, Daddy in heaven. O oh, Abba, in Jesus' name. And even in our sleep, as we listen to the Christian radio or listen to, or listen to the, the scripture or just begin to dream, when we first lay our head down, I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna sow this into you as an opportunity. When you lay your head on your pillow tonight, no matter what's going on in, in the noise realm, as we begin to pray and to focus on the Lord Jesus, ask the Lord to show you your own spirit. Show me my spirit. Show me how awesome my spirit is. Holy Spirit, take over my spirit in the night. I want to hear from you, Holy Spirit, connected with you. And I want to live from this place. Start tonight. I plead the blood of Jesus over my ears, my thoughts. I only have thoughts of you. I want you to say these things out loud when you pray. Don't just say them in your head. That will bind all the darkness from being able to get a hold of you in Jesus' name. And then we verbally invite the Holy Spirit to take me over. Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. I ask you to take me over in the night and speak to me. Speak to my spirit in Jesus' name. Give me dreams and visions from heaven in Jesus' name. Give me hope. And through the night, if God chose you to pray for people and connect with people, then, then you just do that in Jesus' name. This is when you go to bed in the spirit and have decided and determined that I'm going to live in the spirit. Guess what? You're going to be very prone to wake up in the spirit also. You're not going to have to process, oop, I better, I better start doing the right thing and get my coffee. No, nope. you just be like, I have this peace inside of me that Michael Copeland's experiencing that's never going to leave in Jesus' name because that's who he is, a man of peace. That's who we are in Jesus' name. Lord God, I thank you for changing our identity, confirming. Many of you are already there. I thank you for confirming who we are as our roots are in the Holy Spirit, and then we're producing these fruits, and we are identifying as these people, your people. Lord God, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Edify somebody before you go. That means, that means I want you to talk to somebody and encourage them. Thank them for who they are. Tell them something about you. Put an encouraging word on everybody. Somebody encourage Betty. You can't leave for you. You've got to get in here and get some encouragement. Come on. Come on. Get over there. Okay.